What is going on Lego Maniacs? It's Ty the Lego Guy here and welcome to a Lego pirate ship comparison. We have four fantastic ships right here. Um, in fact, they span all the way from 1992 to 2020. So we have 28 years difference in time. But we're gonna see these guys, we're gonna compare them, maybe see which one's better, uh, which one's biggest. That's a question a lot of you guys are gonna have. Um, but the first one we're going to be taking a look at is the LEGO Imperial Flagship that set 10210, had 1664 pieces, 9 minifigs, retailed for 180 US and came out in 2010. Now nowadays this set's going for 826 new or 560 used, so it's obviously appreciated a lot and there's a lot of good reasons why. We'll also be taking a look at the brand new Pirates of Barracuda Bay. That set 21322 had 2,545 pieces, 10 minifigs, retails for 200 US, and it came out in 2020. Now, we'll not be taking a look at the island just because this is a pirate ship comparison, so we won't be doing that. Then we'll also be taking a look at the Brickbeard's Bounty. That set 6243 had 592 pieces, 8 minifigs, retailed for 100 US, and it came out in 2009. Now nowadays this set's going for 294 new or about 162 used. And last but not least, but certainly smallest, we'll be taking a look at the LEGO Imperials flagship that set 6271, had 317 pieces, four minifigs, and it retailed for only 50 US and it came out again in 1992. Now nowadays, this is the real kicker, it's going for 850 new or 201 used. So obviously people like this ship a lot. Um, yeah, anyways, this should get interesting. Uh, but anyways, enough talk, let's get right into it. And to begin, we're actually gonna take a look at the 2010 Imperial flagship. This ship is a beast. Um, but we're gonna just briefly give you guys a little bit of an overview of the minifigs that were included. So you got nine of them. Uh, you got an Admiral, Admiral's daughter, Brickbeard himself, a number of red coats, and a chef. Um, yeah, great looking minifigs. We're not gonna get too detailed. If you guys want individual reviews of all these sets, I have them on the channel. But uh, yeah, that's just a brief overview of the minifigs included. Let's now take a look at the ship. And here she be, mateys. So let's give you guys a 360 view of this beast, this bad boy. Honestly, this ship is amazing. As you guys can see, I, can, I can't even fit the entire thing in, this, in the um, screen. Like the top little fort uh, flag is not showing up. So you guys can see it's a really big ship. Great looking. Uh, I'll just show you guys the top of those, the top of the ship, you know, those flags. Uh, anyways, that's the ship. Uh, let's now take a look a little bit at the interior. And I'll just give you guys a little bit of more of a look, kind of from like a bird's eye view. But now let's actually take a look at the inside. So how you do that, it's really simple. Bang, it's literally held on by some studs. Bang, so it's, it's really, really easy to take apart. Um, that's one thing I really appreciated about this set is just the simplicity and check this out. Look at those amazing guns. Holy crap. I wish they would have given you eight cannons because then you could fill this boy completely up. But to my knowledge, there is no other pirate ship that just has a gun room like this. It, it's very unique. Uh, then you guys can see there's a little kitchen, a little jail. And what's cool about this as well is the anchor goes up and down. So if you pull it up, it goes up. And then if you put it down, if there was act if it was actually in water, uh, it comes down. So if you want to lay anchor, so great looking set, all in all, really really do like it. Um, the other last area that we should definitely take a look at is the captain's quarters. So how you kind of access that is nice looking uh, bridge of the ship. Literally just comes apart like this. This is I'm gonna just say it. Spoiler: This is the easiest set as far as taking apart and getting to the interior. So here we have a nice little instrument, uh, treasure chest, a map with uh, some rubies. Looks fantastic. And then on the other side, um, he also has a telescope. So I, I just thought it was really cool. Very dignified little cabin. Um, anyways, that's the Imperial Flags from 2010. Let's now take a look at the Barracuda. 
And the next vessel we're going to take a look at is none other than the Barracuda ship from Barracuda Bay. And these were the 10 minifigs that were included in the model. Um, we're not going to get too detailed into them, but just to give you guys a brief overview, nice looking slew of minifigs. Uh, if you guys want a review of this ship, I have it on the channel as well, or I should say the bay and the ship. We look at both in that uh, video. But anyways, nice looking minifigs. It gives you everything you'd want a pirate ship to have. And it's very surprising that there's no good guys included. The only good guys that are included are the dead skeletons. Uh, anyways, nice looking minifigs. Um, let's now get into the ship. And much like the 2010 Imperial flagship, you can't fit this guy completely into the screen. It's just a beautiful looking ship. Very sleek looking. Uh, it almost has a snot look to it. Now what that means is studs not on top for you guys that are wondering why is this guy saying snot. Um, but, I mean, there's some studs that are still showing, but it's just a very sleek, well put together ship. You can see they put a lot of time and effort in the detail, and it really shows. Um, anyways, let's now take a look at the interior and get a little bit closer view of the ship. But before we take a look at the interior, let's just give you guys a little bit better view of the mass. Great looking, great job on LEGO's part. It's great looking. Um, the bridge is actually very cool as well, very similar to the Imperial flagship. What I love about this set though is I love all the crates and barrels just hanging around. It really makes it look like a working uh, pirate ship. The other thing I just want to mention quickly is this one feature right here. So you notice this, same thing as the Imperial flagship, if you turn it to the left or right, the anchor comes down, and if you turn it to the left, the anchor gets pulled up. So very similar to the other uh, pirate ship. However, this one, I have to say that this is probably the most detailed pirate ship of them all. And I'm going to show you guys exactly why. Now let's first take a look at the captain's quarters. Look at what the amount of stuff that's going on in here. Um, just great job on Lego's part. As you guys can see, there's a nice little candle area, nice little um, pirate chair, captain's chair, I should say. Uh, he also has some booty in his ship. I mean, that's kind of what pirates do. Wouldn't be a pirate ship without it. Although the last one was more like the red coat ship. And then it also has that authentic uh, wig from like the 1800s, 1700s. And I love the fact that he has it um, just on this like little statue in case he ever has to get himself dressed up. So great, great looking ship. Um, there is more interior to the, this ship though. There's a lot more interior. And how you kind of access it it's not as easy as the Imperial flagship. So why I say that is it's not as easy to like play with it. You literally have to unhook this, like the, the ropes. You have to do it for both of them. So it's, it's not as easy. Like that's one thing I really appreciate about the Imperial flagship. It comes apart way easier. So then once you have that, this isn't too hard. You can take it off like so. So, see, and you have to unhook these strings as well. Like, it's it's not easy to <laughs> to do this. Not as not as easy as the Imperial flagship. But once you have those pieces taken off, it's not too difficult. Literally, you just lift this up. Bang. We're gonna take a look at, at the interior. Obviously, get these cannons out of the way. These little square pieces actually come in handy quite. It, it does a good job. It's just not as easy as the Imperial flagship. And this one you actually don't have to take apart because uh, you literally can't take that off as easily. But I'm gonna just tell you guys in the front area, we will show it a little bit. There's not much going on. So let's now take a look a little bit more at the interior. And guys, I literally took the camera off the tripod just to give you guys a better view of what's going on in here. And I have to say, I, it's, it's fantastic. I love these new candle pieces. Look at the um, hat with the plum, fantastic looking. I love the little bar in the far left, looks fantastic. Let's just turn her around a little bit more. A lot going on with this guy, as you guys can see. I love the little painting back here of a sailing ship. Another little table with another one of those little awesome looking little um, uh, candlesticks. And then flipping around a little bit more, we get some more detail. I love the little beds. And the letters, these pirates write a, letter, write a lot of letters, which is actually quite surprising uh, since a lot of pirates were illiterate. But um, yeah, great looking interior. Again, it's just not as easy to access 
as the Imperial flagship, you kind of have to take everything apart. Like, as you notice, everything's like hanging around. But all in all, great looking ship, tons of detail. Um, let's now take a look at the next ship. And moving on, we'll now take a look at Brickbeard's Bounty. Now this set actually includes eight minifigs, just to give you guys a quick overview of the minifigs included. The mermaid was actually included as a minifig, but that makes sense. She's essentially a minifig. You could even take that brick off the, you know, the one by two brick that's green and just stick the tail straight on and you'd have another minifig. Uh, anyways, those are the minifigs themselves. Um, let's now take a look at the ship. And now we've come to Brickbeard's Bounty. So this is obviously a smaller ship than the other two. There's no comparison. This one's definitely smaller. I'll we'll give you guys a 360 view of them. Still a nice looking vessel. It's just not nearly as big. I mean, he's kind of a medium sized ship, let's say. I think that's pretty appropriate, pretty fair. Uh, now let's, uh, let's get a little bit closer and uh, check out the interior that this ship does have. So to start her off, uh, let's just give you guys a bird's eye view of this ship. Nice looking, as you can see, it does not have multiple decks. That's actually a rarity within pirate ships. I believe that those two pi previous pirate ships, the Barracuda base set and the Imperial flagship, are some of the few sets that have an interior, at least, you know, along the uh, bottom of the ship, right? They don't have multiple decks, which is really cool. Uh, anyways, right here you guys can see it has a gun deck, which is fantastic. Um, this one, this one has less features, the anchor, does not get pulled up, um, you know, by any contraption whatsoever. But still, all in all, nice looking ship. It does have a net, which is kind of nice. You can put, you know, treasure in there, or it can be used as a prison. There's some options. Uh, and then we'll also take a look at the captain's quarters. Now, it is a little bit le less lackluster than the previous two. By less, I mean a lot. Um, let's actually just give you guys a better angle on that. There's not a ton going on. There's literally a little seat, which doesn't look that comfortable, a stool, a table with a map and a wine glass. But you know what? It's still a good looking ship. It's just a little bit lackluster. You could fit in a treasure chest or whatnot. But anyways, not a big deal. Still good looking. And what I do really like about this is the rotating cannon on the top. Like this thing's ready. Like it's actually really well armed. This set included three cannons, which is a lot for a ship this size, I'd say. Uh, but you could obviously, obviously fit five. Um, if you modded this, you could even fit more. Uh, anyways, let's now take a look at the final vessel. And the last ship that we'll take a look at is the 1992 Imperial flagship. So it's obviously much, much smaller than the uh, normal Imperial flagship from 2010. Um, we will actually compare them after this video. Uh, but yeah, these are the minifigs that were included, so you only got four, but you know what, that was a good selection, especially for only 50 US, uh, you can't go wrong. Um, but anyways, those are the minifigs themselves, let's now take a look at the ship. And here's the last ship of the family, it's literally the baby. Uh, it's way smaller than the other three ships, I mean by far, but very nice looking, let's just give you guys a 360 view of them. Now give him a break, he's 28 years old, that's why his sails are a little wrinkled. But other than that, he's actually in pretty good shape. Uh, and a couple of things that I really liked about this model, it's very easy to fit into the screen, let's get a little bit closer, give you guys a bird's eye view of the ship, is he has some awesome features. So one of the features I wanted to show you guys is he has actually a working compass. So let's just zoom in on that a little bit. And as you guys can see, it's slowly rotating. It works. In fact, what we're gonna do, is let's just take her off and show this to you guys. So very, very cool. It actually is a working compass. That's one of the features that I really, really liked about um, this model. The other thing that I liked about it is if you move the wheel, the rudder moves. So that's fantastic. I mean, what set does that? I don't know of any other pirate ship that has included that feature. Just give you guys a better view of that. So very, very cool. I love this ship, even though it is the smallest of the four. Um, what we're gonna do now is just compare these guys side by side. And here they all are, back to back. So you guys are probably gonna be surprised to find this out, but without the island, the Barracuda, the Barracuda is actually smaller 
than the Imperial flagship. The Imperial flagship is actually just a bit taller. It has as well, just keep this in mind, it has three sails. The Barracuda really just has two. I mean, yes, it has the back sail right here, but I'm not really, that, that's not the same as having an, another entire mast, right? Like, it, it's just a smaller ship, although I still do really like it. And then um, right here, obviously, Brickbeard's Bounty is kind of the me medium ship of the lot. It's, uh, it's not nearly as large as the final two. And then the very smallest, the Imperial Flagship, which shouldn't even be called that, is by far the smallest ship. It's far smaller than the uh, 2010 Imperial Flagship. In fact, we will compare those two side by side just because I find it hilarious. Uh, the size differences. These two pirate ships, I would say that the Barracuda is about twice as big as this guy. It doesn't have any interior. But yeah, that's pretty well back to back so you guys can see. The biggest ship, and we're just talking ship, not Barracuda Bay with its island. The Imperial Flagship is definitely bigger. So actually just show you guys the back here. Actually, I'm not even being fair. Let's pull her back a little bit more. I thought I had it all the way back, but guys, the Imperial flagship is actually quite a bit longer. So anyways, I found that really interesting. Um, I thought it'd help out for you, help you guys as well. If you're looking for the biggest, baddest ship, the Imperial Flagship's definitely bigger. If you're looking for probably the biggest pirate ship that's easily accessible, it's this guy. And again, with the island, it is definitely bigger than the Imperial Flagship. Um, anyways, that's the comparison. It's just crazy to see all these guys side by side and see how Lego's kind of changed over the years. I mean, we had that in the early 90s, that in 2009, 2010, which was huge, like crazy. The bad guys were way outgunned. And then we got the Barracuda. Um, but now, actually, let's just quickly compare the two Imperial flagships, because the two pirate ships, again, you can see that the Barracuda is about twice as big, um, you know, with width and it having, you know, two um, levels. Uh, you know, it's just a bigger, all, all in all bigger ship, right? But let's now compare the um, Imperial flagships against each other. So Brickbeard's Bounty, the 2010 ship, is literally half the size of the, of the Barracuda, whereas the two Imperial flagships, this one looks like it should just be flanking the main flagship. Like this, this is not the flagship. This is the flagship. Like literally, this guy's a quarter to a third of the size of the Imperial flagship. Like it's just, that's incredible, the differences in sizes. Uh, I still really like the older one. I just, look how tiny it is in comparison. But that was the Imperial flagship of the early 90s. It was not anything near what we got in 2010. Uh, anyways, those are the two ships. I just thought that was so amusing how different in sizes they are. Um, but yeah, let's now get into the end of the comparison and get my final thoughts. Well guys, that was my comparison. Do hope you enjoyed it. Honestly, all these sets have their strengths and weaknesses. I mean, it's really hard to say which one's best. Now, I'm gonna say it right now. I think Pirates of Barracuda Bay is the best set considering you can make it into an awesome shipwreck island. But if we're talking just ship to ship, guys, just, you know, straight across, the Imperial flagship is a bigger ship. I mean, it, it just is. The island, now keep in mind this has more pieces, of course, but without the island, their pieces I think are somewhat similar, and I believe that there's more bigger pieces put into the Imperial flagship. However, which one's more detailed? Well, I gotta say the Pirates of Barracuda Bay uh, ship is more detailed. I mean, those rooms are incredible, although the gun room on the bottom of this ship is just fantastic. So, ship to ship, I really, I almost, I call it a tie. I can't say which one's better. However, if we're including that this also turns into a shipwreck island, I gotta give it to Barracuda Bay. Um, but just ship to ship, they're equal. And if you want a bigger ship, you actually want to get the Imperial flagship from 2010. It is, it may be the biggest pirate ship as far as like the pirate line goes of all time. Then we've come to uh, Brickbeard's Bounty. Now, not a bad pirate ship. Definitely, it does not contend with these guys. It's, it's smaller. I mean, yes, its length is about the same size, but it doesn't have double decks. It's just, it's a smaller ship. You know, it may, it's basically, it's not nearly as tall either. I mean, even look at, look where, where, look where the masts go on these ships. This one's far tall. Well, no, these two are far taller 
than the uh, Brickbeard's Bounty. Although it's still a good model, good selection of minifigs, love that shark. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's not nearly as big. And uh, it's not nearly as detailed either. So these two definitely knock it out of the park. And then if you're looking for a little ship that has a lot of cool little features, that compass and that rudder are fantastic. Um, for 1992, this is a great ship. And what's really cool to see is the differences over the years of how LEGO's made pirate ships, and it hasn't really cha changed all that much. The one in 92 still looks pretty good compared to the one in 2020. But let me know what your guys' thoughts are on this. Uh, which one's your favorite? Um, I'd be very interested to know. Just because I think they're all good. They all have their warrants. I just think that these two are definitely the best in different ways. This one, I'd almost say the smaller one might be a little bit better than the bigger one. Just because it has those awesome features and more of that classic type look. Uh, but again, let me know what your guys' thoughts are on that. Uh, I just really wanted to do this basically to give you guys an idea of which one's biggest and the differences between them and how LEGO Pirate Ships have changed over the years. Uh, but anyways, that's all I got for you today. But if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing and click that bell so you're notified for any future LEGO Pirate Ship comparisons, pirate set comparisons we do on this channel. I really enjoy doing them and uh, yeah, we do quite a bit of that. Uh, but anyways, that's all I got for you again. But thanks again for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.